fantastic. Well, I have a book called How Faith Cometh, and uh, I don't have any copies, it's run out of copies, but it is in the internet. You can get it uh, online at my website, and it talks about what is faith, degrees of faith, faith that works, principle of faith, the method of faith, the law of faith, how faith cometh. Just very, very short seven chapters. The reason is because there's no way I can cover all this in this one morning. Uh, how faith cometh is chapter seven. Number, uh, nine ways how faith cometh to knowing the will of God. Number two, by walking in the spirit and not in the flesh. Number three, through the renewal of the mind, what it means. Number four, through acting on the word of God. Number five, through confession of your heart. Now there is a profession of faith and there is a confession of faith that's totally different. A lot of people profess faith but they don't confess really faith and they don't mean what they don't know what it means. A uh, mental ascent is just a profession. Uh, confession is a conviction. There's a great world of difference. Uh, that's why we see some people, you know, they say faith, but you don't know what faith they are having. <laughs> The Bible says, Paul says, examine yourself if you be in faith. Why examine? He's talking to Christian. That means, if there is real, there is counterfeit. And some people think they are faith. And I like the story of uh, these uh, communists, two communist uh, soldiers that enter the meeting like that. Uh, you know, communist country, they don't allow freedom of worship, especially Christianity. And the place was packed. And this, these two soldiers had submission a machine gun f-16 everybody was scared now the authorities have come to arrest us you know so he, the, these two fellow went up to the pulpit and said you know this is illegal christianity is not true you people are, are, are worshiping or for, and you don't know what you're worshiping you are in, in 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 trouble and he says those of you who would renounce your faith now the place is packed with so-called christians okay those of you who would renounce your faith uh, you stand up and you can walk out. Come to my left side and then you can walk out. Wow, quite a few. A whole lot of them stood up, came in front, and they said, okay, you can walk out. They all walk out. So when they walk out, these two soldiers say, now the ones that don't, they're the ones that only profess faith and the mental ascent, they don't really believe. <laughs> we two soldiers are also believers. <laughs> It's a trick, but it's true. That last trick, what I'm trying to say, okay? I'm just, just using one example. That's not what I'm going to talk. But it is important. Number six, how? Seeking God with a whole heart. Because faith is from the heart. With a heart, a man believes. You see, there's a head faith and there's a heart faith. They look very much the same. Intellectual faith. And uh, in this book, I talk about, actually there's 50 kinds, but I talk about the common faith, I talk about historical faith, I talk about uh, the deep unfinished faith, great faith, temporary faith, you know, uh, active faith, and uh, you go on, there's different, different kinds of faith. And uh, we think that those uh, faith, that is just a mental ascent, uh, intellectual knowledge is really faith. It is faith in a sense from an intellectual point of view, but faith is more than intellectual ascent of uh, facts and true, which is important, okay? I won't go into it because I'm going to preach it in a little while. Number seven, how faith comes to surrender yourself totally to God. You know, uh, God only touches lives that are surrendered. The fire of God only descends on altars that are surrendered. And on altars that are not empty, and altars that are not broken, but surrendered to God. No sacrifice, no altar, no surrender. Altar is a place of surrender. Mm -hmm. So we got to understand it because it's no time. But I, in, in this book, we, we talk about it a little. But these are very simple facts that are through many years of seeking God. Uh, through revelation and studying of the Word of God, God showed me how faith come up. Faith come up through the Rima Word of God. You see, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Nothing that, that is made that was not made by the Word of God. And it says the Word became flesh. So the Word of God, it is just written Word, but it became the living Word. Amen. So is that a question people ask? Chicken and egg, which come first? 
and get. <laughs> now, how do you, how do you get a chicken if there is if, if no egg? If an egg, okay, how do you get the egg uh, become a chicken? Very simple. You see, the word of God is a like chicken and egg, lah. Okay, that's a, this quite a I mean crude uh, illustration, but I'm trying to just show you one aspect. Uh, one area of, 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 of truth, and I hope you understand. Okay? Now, how do you get the egg to become chicken? The mother chicken sits on the egg, right? To incubate and hatch the egg. Now, in my book here, I talk about, actually, in my Facebook, the other book that I have, actually, this is the, the small copy, but in the internet, I talk about how you incubate your faith. Because as you incubate your faith, why we have services like that? Why your pastor teach on higher faith and teaching on faith and teaching on, on, on giving or whatever subject, okay, deliverance of prophecy, is to incubate your faith. You see, you can you can have a person come in maybe in a prophetic and he teach you, give you seminars about prophecy and everything, five days, four days, and then he, he asks you to practice, but you know, you have to incubate again, you got to develop, you got to progress, you got to maintain, amen? You got to stir up, by the stir up the gift, of faith, stir up the gift of prosperity. Why stir up? Because there is an incubation process. Likewise, I talk and I talk. I, uh, <laughs> people who come, come along with me, they see I'm very normal. I am very ordinary. I am. But God loves to use ordinary people to do extraordinary. How many of you, of you are ordinary? I think you are. You know. I will give you an example. Joseph was quite a very ordinary person and he had a dream but his dream landed him in jail and he became a jailbird <laughs> uh, there are reasons why he ended in jail okay? he talked too much some of the things that God speak to you it may be a vision from heaven it may be from the spirit of God but it is for you and you need to know when to shut your mouth and who to say what to say not to say and when to say yes. Hello? Yes. And if you say at the wrong time, you, the, the devil, devil, the enemy can come in, distort, distract, deter, and derail and delay the dream. But David knew the ways of God. David knew how to incubate his faith. Even in the prison, he was operating in the gifts of the Spirit. He didn't complain. And you know, those who complain, who got it, those who regret, those who get in self pity, they are not operating in faith. They are not incubating your faith. Many times when you go to trouble, why God these are? How many like to go to prison? Let me see your hand. How many like to talk in prison? How many want to be a prophet? Let me see your hand. How many want to live in the palace? Let me see your hand. But you see, the problem is two things you need to understand in life. Say two things. Let me just talk. Two things, you can learn more from what I talk. Yeah. Two things you can learn in life that you must understand and learn in life. That is about your life, about God. Two very important things. Say two things. Two things. I must learn, I must learn. In, life in life with regard, with regard. To, my to my destiny. What are the two things? Number one, time. Time and seasons. Time and season. You know what is who who is the most dangerous person on earth? Satan? <laughs> no, 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 no. You. But who is the most dangerous person? The most dangerous person may not be you even. The most dangerous person is a person whose time has come. A person whose time has come, when a person's time has come, doesn't matter what the circumstances that Joseph, he was, I mean, for how long he was in prison? 13 years, 13 unlucky numbers, but God is a blessed number. 13 is holiness. God took 13 years to process him to bring that place of sanctification. You are called, yes. You may have all the prophecies, but there is a sanctification process. And it may take 3 years, it may take 30 days, it may take 13 years. You may have a dream, great dream. You know? But it may take a number of few, more few years for you to see the fulfillment.
fulfillment of that dream. Can you say amen? amen. So time and season, the Bible says the sons of Esachar were men who knew the times and have understanding of the seasons that they were living in. So in your life, in my life, you've got to understand what season. There's a season when Joseph was in prison and it's no fun. And it's the hardest time. That's why faith is important. Yet in prison, he kept that faith. Hello? High faith. It's been very high faith. If I'm in prison, you know, I say forget our God. 13 years already, you know. Nothing is happening. Maybe some of you, you've been waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. Seeming delay. There is a delay that God is working in you. Seemingly delay. But there is a delay that is not of God. Hello? You know, today you want instant tea, instant coffee, instant Christianity also. <laughs> Let me breathe. <laughs> you can't do that. Don't try to do that. <laughs> yeah, you must know why you do that. I'm having fun. Are you angry? I have fun. <laughs> That's your problem, not mine. <laughs> Bible says rejoice, and again I say rejoice. You say, is that the way you rejoice? Well, at least let me rejoice. Amen? Amen. Joseph took 13 years for him to come to the place where God uh, uh, ushered him from the prison, the pit, the prison, into the palace. So the first thing that you need to understand is time and seasons. Then the second thing you need to know is level. Level. Say levels. Yes. Levels. levels. We got pastors, apostles, prophets, but all of us are in different levels. And that's where the problem is also in churches, among believers also. I was with Michael. Now he is he's very nice, humble, simple. You know, but he, he is a boss. When you look at him, he doesn't say, I am a boss. He drives people around, he drives people, he said, he said people, a lot of people don't want to drive, drive people around. They want to be in the position, the place, title, status. And that's why many times, even in believers, in ministry, among ministers, we have issue. Then we say, oh, Pastor Bernard, the, we, we say we body of Christ. Okay, we body of Christ. We come and work together very hard. Cannot because unless I'm the boss, unless I'm the biggest church, how come? I thought we are in Christ, but because you see, many times the people are in different level, and we got to understand our level. Bible says from faith to faith. That's why I got higher faith. So what I'm talking is really related to higher faith, is it not? Yes. Amen. I don't have time. I'm trying to put into a capsule to release as much as possible trusting the Holy Spirit of God to give me utterance to say what you need to hear Amen, Amen? Amen. I don't plan I come here, I don't plan I didn't really expect to come I, 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 I actually said to him you know, uh, put me in other churches <laughs> it was last minute you know, I'm not blaming Michael okay? But what I'm trying to say is, God leads. God guides in a different way. But when God leads me back to a place, there are some places I go to. I mean, they treat me very, very well. And then I don't go back. The pastor gets angry because I don't go back. He said, we treat you so well. Why well, you don't come back at all? And he tells another pastor, I want this apostle. But maybe he just he loves the ministry. And he said, why, pastor, you don't want to come back anymore? He said, no, I want to come, to come back. I'm always thinking of them. I'm always praying about that. And one time I was just next door to the state where, where this uh, apostle was. I wanted to go. I couldn't. Holy Spirit don't allow me to go. I don't come because you're very nice to me. Oh, no, very good. We should be very nice to people. Amen? I don't come because just to eat. I come because God has an assignment. Do you get what so we must know our assignment. We must know our level. Amen. Amen. When we know our level, we don't have to show off. We don't have to compete. We don't have to impress. It doesn't matter what happens to us. Faith is strong. Faith is something that is strong. 
And when I talk about faith, I'm not talking about just theory, theological uh, doctrine, which is very important. I never put down on those things. But there has to be more substance. Bible God, faith is the substance. Oh, so faith, you can say faith, faith, but your faith will not substance one. You say curry, curry, but your curry will not substance one. True or not? But kruma also, but no substance. You go and eat, you say, ah, this one, no, la. not authentic one, la. not real. La. How come? Because if you taste, it's like a durian. Some of you look like durian, eh? <laughs> I didn't say you are durian. Huh? <laughs> oh, yeah, you think. So, I will just try to wake you up a bit. Like durian. When you have tasted the good, good I grew up in a durian farm. My, my uh, grandmother had a uh, big durian farm, almost the whole estate of this, uh, bigger than all this Penang area uh, in Kuching, their, their farm. And it was, it's now the Golden Triangle in Kuching before, that belonged to my grandmother. And we had so many durian trees. And you know, we got the head, the, uh, the Chinese call it du, du, durian tao. Uh. So I literally translate, doesn't sound as good. Uh. It's the head of the durian. <laughs> <laughs> with the head of the durian. That means it's the best of the durian. And we know which tree has the best durian. And there are so many trees. Literally, you know, over maybe 70, 50 trees. A lot of trees, big estate. And uh, so many durians. But we, we, we give away, of course, we sell also. I'm not talking about the... Uh, 20 over years ago. <laughs> I, mean, I didn't plan to tell that. So that's just come to me to, to illustrate the truth. But you see, there's so much to know. But we, we, because we know what is the best durian, the best tastiest, the good we want to eat the head durian on it and give to the best friend the head durian. The, the one that's not head, we sell it. Because it's high quality one. Huh? We know which level, what kind of level is durian is. Hello? So likewise, in your life, in my life, we need to know, we need to know our level. Hello? Uh, Two things I say you need to know in life. And we go home already, in Jesus' name, your faith is high already. <laughs> <laughs> Timing. Hey, Chale, uh, this too true, uh, will take a whole life for you to work it out. Jo uh, jo whether it's Joshua, whether it's Joseph, whether it's Moses, whether it's David, all the men of God, they went through seasons and timing. And I want you to understand because why? You may feel that your season now, what you're going through, is like you're in prison. Nobody knows! It's helpless and hopeless. What can I do? Why would I serve God when I'm in prison? Everything is against me. Financial problem, mental problem, emotional problem, family problem, relationship problem, problem after problem. And for 13 years, at Joseph, you feel like in prison, nothing happened. But when your time comes, say with me, your time comes. Time you say what has got to do with high faith? A lot to do. I haven't started preaching. My preaching is Matthew <laughs> chapter 8. Yeah. And a lot of scripture also. But I need to say only what you need to understand and grasp in your heart. What I say may be simple, but it took me 40 years today to understand. You say, oh, yeah. I preach 40 years, thousands of messages. It's only in the last few years I see crystal clear as all these things come together. The timing, why there are casualties, why there is, there is a wounds, why there is desertion, why there is disappointment, why there is discouragement, why there is depression, why there is people giving up. Because faith doesn't give up. But so many Christians yeah. give up along the way. They start well, they don't end well. Because along the journey of faith, faith is a walk. Bible says that Abraham, the father of faith, we are to follow and walk in the steps of Abraham. Amen. But some of us, Abraham took step, even if he's the father of faith, he took step. Now there are step one, step level one, level two, level three, level four. Some of you in level three, and you want to jump to level seven. And then what happened? You crash! And you say, ah, it didn't work! Not that it didn't work! You didn't understand typing, you didn't understand your, le your level. And you try to move beyond your timing of God and the level of God. Not the faith, the teaching, the pastor teaching is very good. He's a wonderful teacher. You have the best teacher. But your timing and the level is different. I know in me 
imitate me as I imitate Christ. But you still need to know your position and your place and your level. Amen. Hello? Amen. Just this two, three, we can go a few hours. It's all in the Bible. The Bible says, e You can laugh. You don't, don't go all back. When you laugh, you know, the joy will spill out. You <laughs> love it. You do that. In the fullness of oh. who was he talking about with regard to in the fullness of time? Jesus. Ah, that's right. Even Jesus. You know how long was his ministry? Three years. For us Chinese, how are you? Sayang. Kesian. How do you say in Malay? Like, you know, you, you are exasperated. I owe 33 years dying. Oh, God. But Jesus, in three years, he did more than you do in yeah. 300 yeah. years. Yeah. The Bible says, in the fullness of time, he came. In business, let me apply in, in practical work. You may be a businessman. You may have deals you're trying to close. But friends, no matter what the deal, if it's not your level, you're not at that level, and the timing is not right, everything may seem good, it won't work still. Hello? Yeah. Hello? You see, the truth of God, first in the natural. Say it with me. First in the natural. You're having Bible school now. First in the natural, then in the spiritual. And it's very important. Now, I want to give you very briefly that I got to preach. Three things that you need to understand about faith. You know, God is Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Jonah was three days, three nights in the, in, the, in the belly of the fish. Alright? Three is the number for God. Three things that you and I need to understand. Why don't we, we say that uh, we serve a God of covenant. We worship, we follow the, uh, the faith, or walk the faith, the ways of faith like Abraham. And when we look in the scripture, we see God always describes himself as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now why? Why does he call himself Abraham? Because he, <laughs> Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, they were covenant people. They had a covenant with God. Now, faith is based on three things on the covenant of God. The covenant itself involves also three things. But the first three things that, that uh, faith is based on, it is based on knowledge. Now, it's not natural knowledge. It's about, about the knowledge of God's word, revelation knowledge. Say revelation knowledge. <laughs> the truth from God's word. Facts change, but truth does not change. Number two, faith, you need to understand this. When you understand this, when we preach, it all comes together. Number two, you must understand that faith is a conviction. It's not just theory. I can go into Bible school. That's why uh, some people go to Bible school and then they come up and not lose their faith. How come? Because they lost conviction. They lost a vision. Now, as long as Samson had conviction, 36, 26 cannot kill him. <laughs> but when Samson lost his conviction, no need 36, 26, 36. <coughs> or 36, 26, 26. Whatever, 6. <laughs> you see, when a man loses vision, he loses conviction. When he loses conviction, he was blinded. He lost his anointing and lost his power. Actually, the anointing was there, but it was not, he began to sink. You know, an anointing is always there. God doesn't take the key. Even when a man sees, then they wonder how come he's still operating because the king was at the king and calling his team recovered. And if he is a man, though he has seen, he, I'm not asking to sin, you know, you die, you know. He, he, he sin, but he is God's man in God's time, in God's place, and he knows his level, things still work. Now you understand? Hello? So you see that this truth, and once you understand, it opens up a lot of things spiritually. Amen? Then you don't go around talking when your brother sin. What does the Bible say? He that is gossiper. He that 
is very smart and intellectual. He that is the gatekeeper, we've got so many gatekeepers, you know. Why talk when you can't solve the problem? Shut your mouth if you don't have the answer. Hello? You are not supposed to talk. Because if you don't have the solution, you may know, keep quiet and pray. Can you say amen? The Bible says when men sin, that's why the body of Christ is sick. When well, some people don't want to come back to church because they make mistakes or whatever embarrassment, whatever uh, thing that's happened, you know, uh, they leave because, you know, people look at me, you know. But you don't understand that this is a hospital. Amen? Amen. That anybody can see sometimes. You don't have to. But sometimes things happen. Amen? But sometimes God... It's a process that God is working. But not every time because something happened, you'll see. What sin did Joseph do? Of course, his big mouth is all. If you call that sin. <laughs> Sometimes there is, what sin did the disciples do when Jesus says, let us go over to the other side? They had just experienced great miracles, seen great faith, and God said, let's go over to the other side. Nobody wants to go home because why? They want a miracle prayer every day. But then the walk of faith is daily walk with God. Amen? Amen. And as they went over the other side, the Bible said, a great storm came. Now they paid for miracle prayer. They participated, they fed a few hundred thousand people. And 5,000 is understatement, okay? Akong Ama, they all the they are they, a conjugal family. They start, they, they travel with commun community, their community. Chinese community is big, uncle, auntie, you know, all the community. Okay, if you are limb, all the limb come to you. <laughs> ah, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Yeah. And the storm came. Now, who caused the storm? Why didn't God stop the storm? It was the devil that caused the storm. Because why? They were crossing over to Gadarians and there was a Gadarian demon on the other side. So the, it seemed that God was silent. They cried whole many hours, more than seven hours, nine hours. Now the Sea of Galilee was 8 to 13 feet long and wide. It takes the longest two hours to cross. It took more than seven to nine hours. Impossible. Huh? These are experienced fishermen. What it tells us about life we may be strong, experienced, well-educated, Harvard, Oxford, UC. We may have all the doctrines right, but when the storm comes in life, when things that are perplexing happen, when the adversity and the controversies of life happen, I didn't intend to talk like that, but I trust the Holy Ghost. But I'll preach. That's what I do. Because why? People need teaching and preaching. I can preach to you. But teaching, you see, what, what is teaching? What is preaching? Uh, uh, teaching is that you, you gentle, talk softly. Preaching is you sharp. You see? No, what is proclamation? What is explanation? Now, I'm doing teaching and explaining to you, and it takes a bit or more time. Why? So that you have a knowledge and foundation. So that tell you is number two, a conviction. I say three things you need to understand. You must have knowledge, say knowledge. Revelation, knowledge, revelation, truth. Then you must have conviction. Once you have conviction, storm or no storm, devil or no devil, whether God speaks or don't speak, simply God is silent. Just because God is silent doesn't mean God is absent. Some of the greatest miracles I have seen and experienced when I don't even feel spiritual at all. Totally uncrippled bones and tumors and things disappear. I say, God, not fair. I don't feel good. God say, you don't feel. I feel good. <laughs> God is God is God is spirit. When you feel or not feel, just because you are depressed or oppressed and the problem doesn't mean God is oppressed. Amen. He doesn't change. Yeah, yeah. He alone is God. Amen. I'm speaking. If you have ears to hear, I'm not a. I'm not just speaking because I'm a clever person. Paul says, I, when I come to him, I count all my university knowledge, education as dumb. Come, come. They scream.
scream and they cry. Ah, we give it back, Jesus, where are you? When Jesus came, they said, Hantua! They lost all conviction. They lost all faith. One day, we must remember, a few hours ago, ago, they multiplied the lost and fishes. So, faith for lost and fishes is different from faith to fight the storm. Bible says, fight the good faith, fight of faith. I didn't know all this come up. It's not in my notes, I didn't plan it. But I feel the flow, I go. Faith! Fight! There is a fight! You know why? The, the, the Jews, the Israel, when they came up, they, they saw Moses open the Red Sea. The Red Sea became a red carpet. When Pharaoh tried to get in, they were buried in the Red Sea. We say, wow, so great. But in spite of that, it took 40 years and God was angry with them. God was angry. Don't get God angry. You get Dr. Dr. Bernard angry, he inject you something else. <laughs> After my practice. <laughs> but I meant to tell you that because <laughs> God was angry. Why? Because they didn't understand the timing. They said, no time, no time, no, 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 no. And they were not following the, the, the place where God, where God wanted them to go, to do what God wanted them to do. Faith must obey the instruction that God you, give to you. You must, number three, because of time, and I'm preaching. <laughs> Faith, you must rely. Let me raise you, get, get from the internet, okay? You rely, say rely. rely. Or trust. 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 What does the Bible say? Proverbs 3. Five and six. I always quote this. Trust the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not in thy own ota ota. In all thy way. Oh, lean not. What is the ota ota? Your brain. Someone so clever. Brain alone. Think. Information. But no revelation. And why? I am going why? Because why? Because faith. Our faith begins. Oh Jesus. Faith begins as a seed. Say see. see. Say see faith. See. <laughs> Jesus said, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you shall say to the mountain, without remove, without custard seed, and it shall be done. How big is a mustard seed? Like a sand, huh? That's a piece of sand. I said, I love you, Pastor. Pastor, 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 my faith is so small. So. Pastor trying to get you high faith. You tell him small, 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 small. small. Mustard seed faith. Okay, so I'm just talking, it's not my point, but I want to get into your subject. Faith is a seed. Then write it down if you want those. Number two, faith is a tree and a fruit. Faith is a tree and a fruit. Bible says of the fruit of faith. Amen. Faith is a fruit. You grow in the fruit of the spirit. The Galatians talks about, talks about the fruit of the spirit. I have it here in Grafton. He said, why I wear this? Two reasons. But I give one. <laughs> it's love. Uh, in craft for it, this is uh, surgical steel. Not cheap, not fake. Uh, it's from, I think, Germany. Whole, whole chapter, chapter, love is kind. <coughs> love does not boast. Lust overcomes evil. And there's a little cross on it. So every time I get angry, oh, cannot angry now. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, number two reason is because uh, it's a prophetic, remind me. It's a prophetic symbol. God uses things to remind us. It's not right that we are getting you know, the pagan Russia. So we, we are not building idol, idols. You know. But God just used symbols and things. I'm going to show you in a few minutes. Uh, from the scripture itself to show you there is a difference you know? what is real there is counterfeit what is real there is fake just because there is fake doesn't mean everything is fake I, I like what uh, uh, my brother was sharing and uh, you know, we always say you know, if, the, if, if, if a person is rich drive a Merce or a Bentley you say oh I business man I have good money nah. but if your pastor drive Bentley nah, he must steal from someone <laughs> But he's doctor. <laughs> you see, what's still the point? My point is, we compare. We use human 
rationally, rationalization to judge people. But you see, that's when problem come. God is spirit. Those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. So faith is a fruit of the spirit. Faith is it. Faith is fruit. Number three, faith is the gift. The gift of faith. I have been in many places where the gift of faith operates. Where the person believes or not believe, he walks. <coughs> where the person do. I was in Philippines recently. This woman had had a, a hole and one eye can't see or nothing. Can't see nothing. Black on a hole from birth. And God told me I want to heal. And God told me you don't have to touch her. And God told me tell everybody tonight. This woman, I thought to myself, I, I, I you. <laughs> it's after I've done it, then I thought. <laughs> when, when the gift of faith operates, you don't think it's the spirit, the spirit from the heart. Okay? You think in the spirit, but you don't think in the natural. Because the natural is like, impossible. Okay. What if it's wrong? My mind gets switched on and said, hmm, she looks okay. She looks very healthy. She was plump and big size. Look very happy. And she was uh, about there in the sixth or fifth row. And God said, point to her and tell her the power will come up with you. I saw already, and you're going to be healed. But I said, I don't know what sickness it is. The power will fail her, she fell down. She came out, the bright eye that she can't see, she can see totally good. Man. Why? Because the gift of faith was an operation. When the gift of faith is an operation, whether you believe, whether you don't believe, but it doesn't, doesn't every time happen. <laughs> When I don't expect to happen, it happened. Amen. Amen. But then what if it doesn't happen? I want to teach you how to get high faith. Can you say amen? Amen. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I think, you know, but, but, <laughs> what is faith? Why is faith? It's all in the book. How to receive faith? Uh, Bible, only in, in the Bible, two times, it talks about great faith and it's regard to the Roman centurion. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 8. Let's just read and then I'll finish. I'll try to be fast a few points and then we can go home. Amen. Amen. Bible says to every man is given the measure of faith. Say to every man. To every man. I want to lay this again. To every man. To every man. Then the message is includes you. It's talking about you. Now, men uh, is not talking about just female. Uh, it's talking about mankind. Okay? So, women don't feel up. You are a woman sleep, huh? <laughs> and you, you have to have a rebellion. Or is it to every man is given? Now, you see the text. Is. Is. Say is. is. Given. given. Now, if I give you, what does it mean when I give you? Unless you don't take my. Now, if I give to you, what do you mean? What does it mean? Uh, give me the seat. It's okay, whatever it is. <laughs> okay, I said I give it to him. I saw it, okay. What does it mean? Whose is it now? It's mine. You have it now? Yes. Oh, it's given already? Yes. Uh, people say I have no faith. I have no faith. I have no faith. I have no faith. Who told you you have no faith? To every man is given a measure of faith. Ah, it's just a measure. But the measure very small. It can grow to high faith. Amen. Bible says a little faith. Bible says a wavering faith. Bible says uh, unfinished faith. Bible says it's an ordinary household of faith. And Bible speaks of and 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 1 to 6. It speaks of exceeding growing faith through the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ whereby you have obtained all things, all things that pertain to life and godliness and he goes on and now and oh, adding to faith and why? because it will go higher <laughs> you don't know, add in your ring of faith already but all things pertain to life the old verse verse 1 to 6 I don't have time to go in there but I'm just going to go out so that because the whole church spirit, once you get the principle, the Holy Spirit can work on it, and if you got hunger, the principle you grab hold, you can see everything. The Holy Spirit can expand to you. Amen. Amen. When it add to your faith, virtue. A lot of people have faith, 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 no virtue. 
What does virtue mean? Power! Tangibility! It says the woman and the issue of blood touched Jesus and virtue came flow. Oh, there is a flow when you have faith. Amen? And add to, and add to it diligence, self-control. Then it goes on and on. And then the last one is love. Why? Because the most highest faith is love. Amen. For faith works. Oh, faith to work out. I'm working, you know. <laughs> you know, preach like that. If I don't work all these years, it won't be in there to come out. Faith, you know, you have no patience. Give me my remittance, give it now. Bible says the working of miracle. Oh, I thought God worked. Yes, God and you work together so God can work. He didn't get it. We as ministers are working so that, you say, Pastor, what do you do? Uh? They preach once a week. Uh? <laughs> we are working. That's works of the Spirit, understanding the principles so that it can be imparted and deposited in your life. So that God's Spirit can flow and teach you. Hallelujah. So that you can see clearly, and once you see clearly, ah! No one needs to touch you. You can receive your healing. And you say, Amen. Amen. Oh, Jesus. Faith works! Because then I'll give you two points, and then we we'll close with reading, you see. By love, that's what I want to do. So I have teaching, then we got the preaching. Preaching very wonderful. Very jumbo, wonderful. Story. Uh. <laughs> story of the story. <laughs> Faith works by love. What is love? What kind of love? He's talking about God's love. A lot of us don't have love. You know, I say, I see this person, I help, I do this. You know, sometimes we see, we, we like, we, we like the, the, the man, the Bible, the, the Samaritan who was wounded on the road to Jericho, uh, to Jericho and then the priest, the Levite, and then the Samaritan came by, and uh, both of them walked away because they're too busy. They're religious, they got all the theology right, they got all the knowledge of God. Maybe they are afraid of robbers along the way because Jericho Road is very dangerous. So they said, no, oh, they've been wise, no, don't want to touch maybe a trap, you know. But it was a Samaritan who had love, who had compassion, who reached out. Amen? Amen. And it is this. And I'll start preaching, I'll read the scripture, and then I'll start preaching, but... I want you to say faith. Faith is risk. It's taking faith. Say faith is a test. You know, the, it was the Samaritan who took the risk. He bound up the wood, poured it, he poured in the oil and the wine, the kind that restores in my soul. And he went walking and leaping on the Jericho road. He poured in the oil and the wine. He poured the spirit and the word. Amen. Amen. He poured in the oil and the wine. The kind that restores. I think we need, I need to sing to wake some people up. Yeah. Well, so, and he went walking and leaping on the Jericho. It's no plan. Like, it's all in my nose. Huh? No, no. He, 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 uh, he bore in the old, you know what he meant, the seminary said to the innkeeper. He said, I have to go, but you take care of him. That is not. I don't know you, I don't owe you anything. You're not my uncle or auntie. Yeah. I have no association, no reason to help you, especially the Samaritans are enemy. You are my enemy, and yet I help you. That is great love. Amen? Amen. That man had character, that man had love. And that man said, <coughs> When I come back, he says, such a for a man who don't know you, don't know him at all, you know. From Nigeria, you know. Why I bother about you? You take care. Even in this world, we are so selfish. Sorry. We, we live a very narcissistic life. Narcissism is something that even believers are, are held by. It's just me. We think of me first. It's all me. That's why people quarrel fight. If we learn to think of others, even if we are right, there will be fight. But because Narcissus is me, 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 it's me, you hurt me, you wronged me, you didn't hear me, you didn't see me. Aduh, mak ketuan. Aduh. Must bow down your majesty every time. No. You see, you're full of self. And in yourself, you can't have faith. But Paul says, 
Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ. Christ with me. It is no longer I self, narcissism that live. The life I now live, now live, not in heaven now. Heaven you don't need now already, gold on the street already, everything provided already. The life, gold you need here now. The life I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who what? So love. So means you to have faith. The Son of God, you must know His love. So faith works by love. That's powerful. Hello, I'm going to close. Lots of time. That takes another five hours. Faith works by love. I'm not talking about Hollywood kind of love. Here today, come tomorrow. I'm talking about God's unchanging, eternal love that doesn't change. No matter what condition, situation you are, in prison, whatever uh, circumstances you are in life, He loves you and He loves me. But you know, the vicissitudes of life, the cares of life, I want you to see in uh, Mark 4. I don't have time, but this is what Ben said. Mark 4 are four kinds of ground. The soul went up to soul. What is soul? He's sowing the seed of faith. And he says that it fulfilled on four kinds of different ground. And it was only the fourth kind of ground that he produced abundantly, a hundredfold. God is more than a hundredfold, he's a thousandfold God. <laughs> That's high. <laughs> Let's talk hundred enough. And he says that the first ground, he says, he threw the, the seed in. Today I'm throwing seed. You listen, hey, very good, Pastor. Nice, you know. But three weeks later, what did Pastor preach? I don't know what he preached. I can't remember. <laughs> Why? The birds of the air have come. Yeah. I don't know if wrong. We forget. I also forget. The birds of the air come, he says, and steal. Hey, how can you? What is the birds of the air? The birds of the air, when they talk about birds, there are two kinds of birds. There isn't many kinds of birds, but generally there are two kinds of birds in my home. When the Bible talks about birds of the air, he's talking about the demons and the devil. The spirits. He said, you remember uh, uh, Abraham cut a covenant with God? Yeah, made a covenant with God in Genesis. And then he fell asleep. Because he couldn't wake up. He, probably he ate too much. Uh, too much lamb meat. And then he fell asleep. And when, when he fell asleep, you know, uh, God walked God woke him up. And then the Bible says the birds of the air came, uh, tried to take the meat, and Abraham tried to sh show him. But even though we waste all energy showing what the bird he fell, he got tired. But at the end, God fulfilled his promise to Abraham in spite of though he slept. Why? Because when it's God's time, and he is in the place, and he has reached that level, anything, the thing that God wants to happen and fulfill will be fulfilled. Amen. In spite of us. Can you say Amen. Your payment we're going to pay and overpay and left over. Amen. 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 Now why I say that? It's not to say you're very good, you're nice, you're good. Oh, you claim I'm very happy. I'm not happy, you know. <laughs> not happy in the sense that for happy. I'm happy for you, don't get me wrong. I'm not happy because uh, people claim for me, you know. I'm happy because God's word is God's word. Yes. And what he says will come to pass. Amen. Can you say amen? amen. And he is a good God. He is a provider. He provides. A, you know, actually, I think uh, shame. Sorry. That's not why I'm sitting there. The first thing I think, I say, God, are you coming? I, I, I say to you, don't worry, I'm going away. <coughs> you know my heart. <coughs> well, I say, one of you, if you want to give 100,000, 200 also can. Very quiet. Hello? But his pastor giving a choice, a chance. So everybody give. It's not fair, he only give. I'm not saying you give one another. Why well, I'm trying to last week. You talk about high faith. I'm trying to encourage someone up there. Maybe instead of giving 5,000, 10,000, 50,000, why not give more? Huh? Hello? Oh, God. I use my word. <laughs> high faith. Now you want high faith? I don't tell you how because after you rascal, I will tell you and then you don't do it. <laughs> People here, yeah. God said, Give me a million, give me a million, God give me a million, no more in church. <laughs> I was with this pastor some years ago, Paul Square. 
And he said, you know, Pastor, this man is so faithful. Drive me every, drive every, you see, he is like driver, like, like my brother Michael. He is doing all the work, all the job he will do. And one thing is, he wasn't like my brother Michael. Uh, Michael was a bit well off. Uh. He was hardly had anything, no car. And he was always praying for a car. Proton Saga. Enough already. Said, At least a Proton Saga. Uh, not so Haga. <laughs> so it's a small one or a can. Uh. And those days, uh, there's no car cheaper. Uh, uh. Okay, I uh, support also. Uh, why not? Same functionality. Why? Of course, uh, for him, the class is good enough. Yeah. So they pray, you know. 20 years they prayed, you know. And finally, one day he got the car, you know. True story, you know. Here in Peter you know. I don't want to mention Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> No, he told me, he wasn't doing a priest in the church. He told me, he said, he, he answered the prayer that you were here. Wow, he came, you know, he came and he said to me, Pastor, see, my proton hugger. <laughs> oh, brand new. But you know what? That Sunday, he never come to church. <laughs> Next Sunday, he never come to church. Another Sunday, he never come to church. <laughs> Great is, I better sing. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy. Then I come back, Mark and then Matthew. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning. I have a few I like to sing this song. So I sing. You don't like it? Sorry. You better like it. His mercy I see. All oh, I have needed. His hands have provided. Great is His faithfulness, Lord, over me. Great is, oh, I thank you, Jesus. Faithfulness. Great is Thy faithfulness. Sing it to Him. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. Oh, I have need. The nine heads provide Great is the faithfulness Lord unto me. Why did they, why did the bird, how is it is able to steal the word? I'll give you one point, there's three more points, but because I want to go to something. The birds I say is demonic spirits. Our warfare is in the spirit realm. Faith is in the spirit realm. I believe, Paul says, I speak by the spirit of faith. I speak. It's not formula. It's not intellectual. It's more than a character. It's more than doctrine. It's a spirit. So, spirit will attack spirit. The devil will send spirit of fear, insecurity, hopelessness, depression to attack your faith. So your spirit can discourage, depress, insecure, and feel hopeless. Do you see? Hello? Now how? Why? How come we can do that? The word of God is so powerful. Very simple. Why? He says the word of steel. You know why? Because later on he goes to explain. He says the, the, the seed that is sown, verse 13 or what it says, the seed that is sown and the words come to steal is because they didn't understand. They didn't understand. They didn't have a revelation of the Word of God. We need to have a revelation of the Word of God. Revelation of times. Revelation of level. Revelation where the Word of God is incubated into our hearts. Where revelation of how faith works by love. How through faith and passions we inherit the promises of God. How the Bible says faith that is un. Preach and we will have a pure heart. Most of the problem is the heart condition. The heart is not pure. So when the heart is not pure, God had to refine and purify Joseph for 13 years. So that the faith can lift up and be added and added and added. Where he became, you see, he met two persons in the prison the baker and the butler. One died, one lived. So prophecy, some prophecy will send you to your death. <laughs> You know, I think it balance out. Some will preach about like a prophecy, like Santa Claus on it. They're not giving out goodies, you know. And it's true. That's why we need to be very careful when we hear the word of God. Not be serious and not play with the things of God. Amen. 
He made the bad bath, butter and the baker. The baker died because God gave the prophecy the loaves will be eaten. The birds again came and eat the bread. Say, Yo, your head will be chopped, be chopped off. Now, after giving such a big prophecy, yeah, he, he told two of them, you know, the other butler, uh, he said, yeah, in, in, in three days, you, you're going to be uh, returned to your former position. It happened. And he told the butler, hey, Pastor Bernard, uh, now you're doing so well. Uh, remember me, uh, buddy, uh, we both jailed, <laughs> we both gone through, uh, hey, my God, now you're a big man, uh, uh, yeah, don't know what. Uh, can walk into the office, ah. Uh. No, no time, ah. Uh. What no time? You old friend, ma. <laughs> but he said, ah. Uh, and you know what? The guy forgot him. So happy he forgot him. I tell you, put yourself in Joseph's shoe, ah. Uh. You'll be angry, ah. Uh. you lose all favor. But Joseph did not lose his cool. He was so confident. You want to hear my, the next message? On Monday, I'm preaching. You are a giant killer. Amen. How you can be a giant killer? You know, God wants you to give you a spirit of conqueror, a mind of an overcomer, and a heart of a champion. David was able to kill Goliath, though he was outmatched in all way. But when everybody in Israel was trembling and said, How big Goliath is! No one even saw King Saul, experienced statesman, warrior, leader. Nobody there to fight Goliath. But David says, the bigger they come, the harder they fall. His faith was bigger than his fear. Amen. He had high faith. And how he did high faith? In when he was looking after his father's sheep. How did he did high faith? He had a humble heart. How did he find high faith? He needed to keep quiet and not lose focus because he knew he was unstoppable. Amen. And he refused. The brother misunderstood him, misjudged him, mocked him, scolded him, asked and questioned his motive. Two things you and I have to do if we want to have high faith. Very simple. Maybe I'm close to this. Okay, well. Two things you and I need to do if we want to have high faith. Very simple. Our motive. Blessed are those who are pure in heart, and they shall see God. Amen. Change my heart, oh God. Make it ever true. Tomorrow we finish it. <laughs> I I have ten points there. Ten <coughs> keys to be a giant killer. But a giant killer is a person who has high faith. I was going to preach the whole thing here, but impossible. You know. No? But it's very important that you understand, you grab hold. He had high faith. David had very high faith. Because why? He did, 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 he, he did not depend on his natural ability. He depended on the supernatural power of God. He put the battle in the Lord's hand. He knew that God has helped him before. God can help him again. He remember. Say remember. He remember past victory. How we have high faith? You must remember the past where God has delivered you. And then from that past, you build on more and more and more. From faith to faith, from strength to strength, from victory to victory. We read the scripture and we close. Amen. Time already, 12 o'clock, huh? Right? Yeah. Well, huh? Finish till you're good. Matthew chapter 8, please. Matthew chapter 8, verse 5. Now, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, I will preach. Uh, so there's a few thing to uh, highlight this song. A centurion came to Jesus pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed and dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. Okay? I will come and heal him. And the centurion answered and said to him, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my room, but only speak a word, and my servant will be healed. And also I am a man under the authority, and soldiers under me. And I said to one, come, and he comes, and one goes, and goes, and to another, and he comes, and my servant will do this, and he, and he does what I tell him to do. When Jesus said it, he marveled. Only two places in the whole Bible where he says he marveled. This is one of the two places. 
and said to those who followed him, followed, and, he's, he's, and then the interesting thing is, oh no, he's, he commended, oh God, the two persons that Jesus commended with strong faith, or great faith, or high faith, and more faith. Interesting. So sometimes you find faith in places that in people that you don't even realize and think that they should, they would have that kind of faith. And he says, it, it may be you. The person you look and say, hey, hey, he doesn't have faith, but he may be a person that has more faith than you realize. Amen? Amen. That's why the emphasis is here. It's very important. And he says, I have not found such high great faith, not even in Israel. That means why he said that? Because he, my people should have more. And here I see someone who have more, though they are not though they belong to us. And I say to you, many will come from east and the west. I am interesting, he didn't say west to east, but east and west. And sit down with Abraham and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. And the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness, and there shall be weeping and gnashing indeed. And Jesus said to Sanchez, Go your way, as you have believed, so be unto thee. You know, in Luke's version, Luke chapter 7, that I don't want to read, it seems that this same story that is repeated uh, in the gospel, in the four gospel, only two places, Matthew and Luke, it says, it didn't say the centurion came. I want to point out a few points, that's all. It says, a, the servant of the centurion came. Now, some people who are atheist critics and agnostic and those who, uh, you know, so called Bible scholars who have problems with it, and those uh, who are of other faiths say, look, the Bible is contradicting itself. One say the centurion, here say the servant. Now, they don't understand is delegated authority. If I delegate authority, I say I'm the professor. Now, in some universities, the professor lets those who are master's degree to conduct the exam for them on their behalf. It is as good as the professor who is sitting in the chair is conducting the exam. Hello? Uh, Hello? Yes. Amen. Amen. So this is the place here. In, in those days, this is a custom and tradition. They would send the, their, their servant. And when the servant went, it to represent, it's called delegated authority. La, huh? Even in legal, uh, where you can get, get authorized, you know, you can authorize someone, and it's as good as that person is you in place after you give permission to that person. So here is the, uh, the, the, uh, the way they do things. And so there is no contradiction at all. When you look into the Word of God, you must look with faith, believing, not doubt, and unbelief, and question, and controversy. Can you say amen? amen? And you must totally settle your mind. What is the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob? Number three, number <coughs> one. The covenant of God with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, what does three thing, What are the three things that involve? Elevation. Say elevation. <laughs> Possession. And dominion. dominion. That's the Abraham covenant. People talk about covenant, they don't know. Oh, Pastor, covenant, covenant. What is it? If you understand the Abrahamic covenant, you have dominion, you have elevation, you have possession, prosperity. Hallelujah. Yeah. But if you don't understand what it is, that these are the three things, how can you believe God? I have dominion over sickness, I have dominion over disease, I have dominion over the devil. Amen. Amen. What is elevation? Elevation is lifting you up from a low place to a high place. Amen. Elevation why? Elevation of faith. Elevation to lift you up, you are down. God lifts you up. Amen. Amen. You don't have to be in the place where you are. It can change. You see, now, this Roman Sanchez, a few characters, I'll give you very quickly, but I'm going to give you two of, of it, which I want to know. He had a servant. Those these servants uh, were very cheap and treated very brutally. They were sold in the market. Every day in those days, the servants were thrown in the streets because they displeased master and they died. And they were just nothing to the, to the masters because plenty, thousands of slaves. But this century was unusual. <coughs> Say unusual. Why? He had love for someone. He cared for someone that no one cared for. That is agape love. Amen? I told you, faith works by love. He had the love. That's why when he came to Jesus, he didn't say, Jesus, can you, will you heal me? Because before the leper came, before the story of the leper came, he says, will you heal me, Jesus? I will. 
Can you? He said, can you heal me? He says, I will. Here, Jesus said, I will before any question, any controversy. And Jesus said, I will ready to heal you. I am ready. I will heal you. Say conviction. <laughs> because you see, he is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But this man is out of the covenant. And yet God said, I will. Now, if a man outside the covenant can receive, how about you in the covenant? Amen. 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 You must have the conviction. It's mine. Devil, you are illegal immigrant trespassing on God's property. I'm not going to be a tenant. I'm going to kick you out and I'm going to be the landlord. Amen. I'm going to get my house. I'm going to get my car. That's how I got it. I don't know about you. <laughs> and if you believe in the poor, if you believe in nothing, you die in nothing. God is a God of dreams and vision. And this is the second thing and I close. He says he built synagogues. Say honor. Say submission. Say surrender. Say giver. People say, God, give me now, heal me now, uncripple me, and give me a million dollars, and need a million dollars, da 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 Why do you give God Katang Pute? Even serving God is Katang Pute. We give God with condition, limitation, and convenience, and your term. You know, God told us to go to the Philippines. And uh, government said, the government invited us. May I get this? You want his number? I can give to you. But I don't know if you can see him or not. We are so busy. And he said, uh, because the time was too late, we want you to come, but there's no budget. I said, you got to pay. And let's pay a hotel. I said, OK, and we try. He said, two, two hotels only. Four people, two hotels. I said, I don't share room. When I'm ministry, I have my own room. I said, don't worry, I'll pay my own room. But then when we went, they decided to give us each one one room. <laughs> Hallelujah. You don't ask, you don't get it. But I said, you don't pay, I pay. He said, we pay. Oh, we pay. <laughs> but then he said, the crusade cost 4,000 US. Oh, I'm believers. Oh, so my Liping, the lawyer, our lawyer, missionary there, called me, Pastor, what to do? What? I said, you take out 1,000? We got a speaker of financial aspect uh, from Marriott. I said, that lady very rich, take out 1,000. <laughs> Pastor, any take out 1,000 from your pocket. Your own pocket, I will take out 1,000. Actually, I was praying. I didn't. I wasn't praying for this. I was praying, fasting, for 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 seven days. And then she called, and the Holy Ghost said to me, "Tell her we're going to do the crusade." He said, "Should we cancel the crusade?" I said, "No, no cancel the crusade." And I said, "Sometimes uh, the Spirit God tell you, He speak out the heart. You know? I don't like spending money. You know? Why spend? Uh? You spend on me, okay now?" Uh? <laughs> I've spent tens of thousands in there already, spent, spent, spent. But God said to me, you love souls, do you love souls? Those who win souls are wise. I want to win souls in this crusade. God said, how much is worth soul? Thousand dollars, four thousand dollars? I said, yes! You know, we came out with that money, each one of us, four thousand. And in those two days, three days, but two days of actual meeting, two thousand over decisions for us. First time, and then there are people who have not seen the power of God, don't know Jesus at all. They see healing, they see the miracle of God. Every hand go up, every session. Mm. And first time, they come. Second time, they come. Why? Because faith, high faith, high faith, high giving also. You want big victory, big battle also. Investment same, uh, company, ah. Uh. You come back and spend, you don't want to put in capital? Ah, boleh lah. But you say no capital? Ah, that's where faith come in. What do you believe? What can you see? And then you say, but I, 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 I must see the money first. That's where it's wrong. The Roman surgeon say, come to my house. I'm a man, no, I finish our course. Come to my house. If you come to us, you do, I don't need to come to your house, but if you will not, no, 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 you don't need to come to my house. You just say the word. Oh, high faith, man. I've been there many times. When God tell me, just say the word. And it seems impossible. 
But you know what, what, is, what, is, what, is, what is a key there? This Roman centurion understood the principle of submission. He said, I say to one, come, and he come. I say one, go, he goes. Two things here I want to say about Rosemary. He understood submission. He understood authority. One more thing. He understood humility. <coughs> there was humility in this man. Come on, this is a great, great centurion in the Roman Empire, a man of position. And yet he said, I am not worthy. Most of us say, I am manager, you know. And we carry our title. We carry our status. Like, you know, life depends on it. But when the tsunami comes, uh, all those titles no use, you know. Uh, when the doctor said cancer, uh, all those titles uh, is just ashes, you know. Hello, true. And in small stage already, uh, you know, God's word is so powerful. I was writing just as we can go into my Facebook. And this pastor from overseas, he read my writing. And he says, as I read, such power came onto me. I was drunk in the spirit. I can't move. There is power in the word of God. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? You know why? That man was hungry. That man was, was, was uh, uh, emptying himself. This man was searching for God. He was humble. He was submitted to the word of God when he read. And he's still there. You go to the first uh, I write on, on things that God puts in my heart. Uh, you know, it is not God's will for you to suffer and poor because redemption is not reduction. When Jesus saved you, when Jesus uh, bring you to, into a new life and you are born again, you are not born again to suffer again! Hello! He bore our sickness. He took our infirmities. Did he do it or did he do it? Is it finished or is it not finished? It is done! Or it's not done. Now, is it complete? Or it's not complete? Is there efficacy and power in the blood? Or there is no? The Bible says the lamb that is slain. And because the lamb that is slain, there is blessings. Because the lamb that is slain, there is honor. Because the lamb that is slain, there is favor and grace. Because the lamb that is slain, there is dominion and authority. Because the lamb that is slain, there is mercy. The blood that was slain, the blood flow, and in the blood is flow, and you have conviction in your life, you understand the Abrahamic covenant is elevation, domination, and possession. You can say, This is mine, because God says it's mine. Amen. And I belong to Him. But make sure He said it, not you said it. And understand times and seasons. Thank you. God bless you. And we love you. You know, the Roman centurion was a disciplined man. Very disciplined. That's why he said, I'm a man under authority. A lot of us, we're not disciplined. One day cold, one day hot. Be disciplined. Yeah. Can you say amen? But it was not the discipline alone. It was not his character. It was not his giving alone. It was because the Roman centurion, the Roman centurion understood Authority. Say authority. 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 You must understand power, dominion belongs to God. And because it belongs to God, it belongs to you. God bless you. Thank you. We love you. Very much. Okay? Everything is in this book. It's thick. This one is my first version, but in, in the, you can do digital download. It's a thick book. I run out no more book books. Okay? No more book. It's only in digital. So you go to alfredee.com. And uh, you get all these messages, everything in there. Let's pray. Let's pray.